What's up YouTube, it's James Hugh Quick, and today I wanna to talk to you about the top 10 fonts for developers. All right, everyone, so let's talk about the top 10 fonts uh, that developers love in the community. And the way I started this was asking on Twitter, uh, what, what were your favorite fonts as a developer and got lots and lots of feedback. This is actually one of my most interactive tweets. I uh, got a list here, which I think we've included all of these from Chris from Scotch, which is great. Uh, you'll see a lot of the same ones repeated. And so, so what I've done is I've taken the feedback of all these different fonts that developers have put in here uh, and made a top 10 list. And that's what we're going to go through. So we're going to start with my personal favorite, which is Fira Code. And it is, uh, it's very easy to install. It's great. To, it's easy to get started with. And inside of VS Code, this may or may not look, look familiar to you if you've watched my videos. It looks absolutely fantastic. It comes with font ligatures. So you can do things like this and see that fancy arrow there. A triple equals becomes that. A not equals becomes that and so on and so on. So this is the font that I use every single day in VS Code. This is the one that I love the most. It's free, easy to use, and would be great to check out. Let's go on to uh, number two here, which is uh, Source Code Pro. This is one, probably in the comments, this is probably number two in terms of popularity. Lots of people love this one. Um, I think so one, one person even got the uh, semicolon printed as a tattoo on his arm in this font, which is pretty cool. So obviously people will kind of uh, really enjoy this one as well. This is made to work well in user interface environments. Again, something like VS Code, a programming tool like that. So let's come back over and let's just let you guys see source code pro what this looks like uh, a little bit lighter here changes a little bit and the actual actually the screen got darker maybe just because it's uh, lighter smaller thinner font and uh, and then there's less color on it maybe I don't know uh, but that's source code mono then we'll come over to Victor mono and uh, I kind of like this this uh, image that they've got on on their uh, project there. They've also got, you can come to the, there's a page here that this website is just kind of coolly put together. It's got uh, font ligatures as well. So this is a, another free download. Now they do ask you, I think this is the one, if we go to download, they will ask for donations. That's up to you if you would like to donate. Obviously, if there's good content, good things out there that people are creating for free, uh, love the idea of donating for that. So try and support them if you can, but you can give it a try for free. And I uh, didn't really mention this specifically, but we're just typing in the font here in VS Code, the font family, and it automatically changes. So that's what uh, Victor Mono looks like here. And again, they've got uh, font ligatures like that, uh, just like Fiera Code did. Pretty cool. All right, then we've got Inconsolata. I want to make sure I pronounce that correctly. Uh, this is actually in Google Font, so you can go here and download it that way, which is uh, pretty nice. Anything in Google Fonts works out pretty well, pretty easy to get to. And so we'll come over back here. Consolata, we'll type that in. So this is what this one looks like. I uh, didn't actually, I think I missed the transition there, but that's that's what Inconsolata looks like. And one thing I wanna mention about that is Inconsolata is basically the open source uh, version or alternative to Consolas, which we'll talk about in a second um, in the video. So that's Inconsolata. Then let's roll over and get to uh, Monaco. Here's the, is this the, yeah, there's the download that I use for, for Monaco. And this was actually, uh, I think this was like the default font on Windows. Sorry, this, this is the default, uh, like monospace font for a while on Mac. So this comes specifically for Mac. Uh, it doesn't look like, uh, license wise that you're supposed to put this on Linux and Windows. So definitely not encouraging you to, encouraging you to try to do that um, but monaco is worth a shot as well especially if you're on a mac see what this one looks like it's a little bit thicker here than the last one pretty nice all right let's go to dank mono this one is super cool uh mainly just because of the name and how badass that sounds dank mono just sounds super cool uh it looks great i have yet to purchase this myself it's only 40 bucks so it's not that much but these uh the ligatures here look super cool I think this font looks just awesome and I want I want to purchase this so that someone can ask me, hey, what font are you using? And I can say Dank Mono. Super, super badass name. Uh, if you're looking for a premium font for a relatively low price point, I think Dank Mono is definitely worth a shot. 
I think this is one that Chris from scotch.io uses as well and certainly one that he recommended to me. So now I'm recommending it to you to check out and maybe in a future video, I will have bought this and have it running on my machine also. Next up is Ubuntu Mono, again, coming from Google Fonts. That just makes getting these pretty easy. And this was uh, another one designed to just be used uh, in your user interfaces. So let's look at Ubuntu Mono. And we'll just see the difference here. Characters a little bit smaller. Obviously, the code kind of shrunk down there a little bit. Pretty nice looking. Easy to get on Google Fonts, so you can download it that way. Then we've got uh, the Consolas font family, and I think this was, uh, it comes with Windows, it comes inside of things like Microsoft Office, for example, and I think this was kind of their default monospace font for a while, I think. Um, anyway, so Consolas is there. You can actually get it on uh, Mac and Linux as well, so with Office, you can get like an extension pack or something that comes with Consolas. So I've actually got it running on here. Consolas, yep, spell that correct. So it looks really nice. It's got a little bit of a little bit of a slant to it, a little bit almost almost like italics looking, which is pretty cool. All right, then we'll go over to uh, second to last here is Iosevka, and I, I kept wanting to say Isoveka or Isoveka. Uh, this is Iosevka. It took me a while to actually read through and understand that. They've got lots of different examples in here. This typeface is built for code or built from code. Uh, which I guess just kind of makes sense for us as developers and talking about programming fonts. The installation here for Mac didn't really do a whole lot for me. Um, I couldn't get that to work. So I ended up finding a separate link to actually download it. Um, and I have to make sure I spell this. So I O Sevka. Is that right? Yeah, it looks like a real font. Cool. So these are a little bit, uh, look a little bit more kind of like tighter, less, uh, less gap between the letters, but still looks really nice. And then the last one that we have, uh, this one I saved for last. It's really popular, but it also comes at a pretty high uh, uh, pay point, which I, again, like I'm not really willing, this is $200. I'm personally not willing to pay that much for a font, um, but I think this one is, is really intentionally made and, um, and could bring some big benefit to you if this is the kind of thing that means a lot. So we had Dank Mono that was 40 bucks. This is 200, that's a lot to me. Up to you guys to decide. Uh, what you think about it, but I will say that a lot of people love it. And I do want to show one resource I found just for an example of what it looks like. Let's see. Let's search operator mono VS code. There was one video uh, by Paul Halliday. Oh, and there's some of his audio. So uh, this is this is the operator uh, mono font. You can check it out in his video. He does a review. Uh, this you can get a little bit of extra insight, but this is one that people love up to you to gauge whether or not it's worth the 200 bucks price point, uh, which is a little bit too much for me. So that's going to wrap up the top 10 fonts for developers. I uh, hope you enjoyed it. I want to see, I uh, want to see you guys try this out. If you do, let me know which fonts you're using. And if you try a new one, what you think of them, uh, so we can get some feedback and just kind of, uh, give some extra insight to people that are watching the video as well. So with that said, I want to wrap up this fonts video and thank you guys for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Hey guys, if you enjoyed the video, hit that like button, leave a comment and subscribe to the channel. You can also check out learnbuildteach.com to sign up for the newsletter to learn about my latest content. Thanks for watching.